So if you want to prove that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x, you first need to remember the limit definition of a derivative. And so if we let f of x equal sine x, and then we take the derivative of that function, we know that d dx of f of x is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all divided by delta x. And so now if we replace f of x with sine x, because that's what we said f of x is equal to, then we'll have that the derivative here will be equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of sine of x plus delta x minus sine x divided by delta x. And so here's where it gets a little tricky because now in order to simplify this, we're going to need to remember a trigonometric identity, specifically the addition identity for sine. And the addition identity for sine is this. If you have sine of a plus b, that's going to be equal to sine of a times cosine of b plus cosine of a times sine of b. And so in this scenario here, where we have sine of x plus delta x, x would be a and delta x would be b. And so we can rewrite this limit to be the following. We can have that this is going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of sine of x times cosine of delta x plus cosine of x times sine of delta x, right? We're just following this formula where x is a and delta x is b. And so we rewrote this term, but we still need to remember to subtract this sine x here. So we'll have minus sine x. And this is still all going to be divided by delta x. And so now if we clean up our work and move into the next step, then we can work on rewriting this limit by rearranging our terms here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this term in the middle to the front, and I'm gonna put this term in the middle. And so I'll do that here real quick. All right, so all I did there was move this middle term to this position, right now it's in the front, and move this term to the middle, and so then this term went to the back. It's the same expression, just written differently. And so the reason I did that is because now we can see that we have a common term of negative sine x in this term and this term, and we can pull that out for some nice simplification. And so let's do that next, and we'll have that this is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of cosine x sine delta x minus sine x, and we're gonna be pulling that out of each of these terms, right? This term is negative sine x, and this term has a sine x in it, and so if we pull out negative sine x, this term will become negative. And so we'll have one, which is what this term is now, and then this term will be left as negative cosine delta x. And this is all still divided by delta x. And so then if I clean up my work again, our next step is going to be to split up this fraction into two parts. We're gonna take this term and divide it by delta x and then have minus this term divided by delta x. And so if we rewrite that, we'll have that this is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of cosine x sine delta x divided by delta x minus sine x times one minus cosine delta x divided by delta x, right? All we did was split up this fraction into two parts with the same denominator. And then don't forget these parentheses because you are taking the limit of both of these terms still. And so actually what we can do next is split this up into two limits. We'll have the limit as delta x approaches zero of this function and then minus the limit as delta x approaches zero of this function. And so let's do that next. We'll have that this is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of cosine x sine delta x divided by delta x minus the limit as delta x approaches zero of sine x times one minus cosine delta x divided by delta x. And so now if we clean up our work once again, then our next step is to notice what doesn't matter in each of these limits. So remember, we're taking the limit as delta x approaches zero, and so x isn't going to matter or isn't going to affect the result of this limit. And so any part of these two limits that doesn't have delta x in it that we can pull out because it's being multiplied, we should take that out. So for example, in this limit here, we have this cosine x that's multiplied by sine delta x divided by delta x. We don't really need that cosine x in there because this is a limit 
for delta x, not x. And so then for this limit, we can take out sine x because that doesn't have delta x in it either. And so it's not going to be affected by the limit here. This would just be multiplied by the result of whatever the limit would be for these terms that do have delta x in them. And so we can rewrite this to be equal to cosine x times the limit as delta x approaches zero of sine delta x divided by delta x minus sine x times the limit as delta x approaches zero of one minus cosine delta x divided by delta x. Right, all we did was pull out cosine x out of this limit so that it's out front, and then we're just left with sine delta x divided by delta x. And then for this limit, we just pulled out sine x, and so now we have sine x times this limit of one minus cosine delta x divided by delta x. And so now what do you notice about these two limits here? Well, if you recall, these are actually two special trig limits. And so if we remove our addition identity here, we can write down what those special limits are, and you'll see that they are the same. We know that the limit as x approaches zero of sine x divided by x is equal to one, and we know that the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x divided by x is equal to zero, right? These are two special trigonometric limits that we use to evaluate limits of trigonometric functions. And so these are the same limit, even though this one's delta x and this is x, everywhere where there is a delta x in this limit, there's an x in this limit. They are the same limit, but with a different variable. And the same thing is true for this limit. We have the limit as delta x approaches zero of one minus cosine of delta x divided by delta x. And over here we have the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x divided by x. They are the same limit, but just with a different variable. And so this limit will be equal to one, and this limit will be equal to zero. And so now we have that this will be equal to cosine x times one minus sine x times zero, right? We have cosine x times this limit, which is equal to one, which came from here, and then minus this sine x times this limit, which we said is equal to zero. So we have sine x times zero. And so then, anything times zero is going to be zero, so we have cosine times one minus zero, and so this is just equal to cosine x, because cosine x times one is just cosine. And so there we have it, that is our result. We just proved that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x. And so now you know when you take the derivative of sine and you just say it's cosine x, you now know where that comes from. All right, and so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you found this video to be helpful, feel free to check out my channel where I have some other math-related content, including many lessons and example videos for calculus. But this is all I have for now, so I will see you next time.